cabeça. Falou, está? And the last session we have talked about diseases of the subralinar gland and uh, today we, we talk about Cushing syndrome related uh, co clinical concepts, diagnosis and treatment. And today we will continue on the sub subject of, uh, on subralinar gland hyperfunctional hypersecretory states including aldosteronism and aldosteronism means excess aldosterone secretion and aldosterone, hyperaldosteronism or elevated plasma aldosterone. Those patients with the elevated plasma aldosterone could be etiologically, could be uh, uh, related to the subralinar gland and could be the stimulus of the outside the subralinar gland or extra adrenal. The first type or primary hyperaldosteronism is related to the gland itself, which could be related commonly related to uh, aldosterone secreting tumor, uh, adenoma, subarenal adenoma, rarely carcinoma. In 80% of patients, they have adrenal adenoma, and usually unilateral uh, rather than bilateral. Uh, as I see, as I mentioned, rarely carcinoma, and in some of the cases, uh, idiopathic adrenal hyperplasia, nodular type, so in which there is hyperplasia, hypersecretion, and nodular type, and uh, uh, there is no uh, uh, CT scan will be negative uh, in nodular uh, adrenal hyperplasia. Uh, while an adrenal adenoma CT scan MRI will be positive, it will localize or visualize a tumor. Those patients uh, uh, which are related to extra adrenal stimuli for the subarenal gland to secrete aldosterone include actually uh, any patients with congestive heart failure. Uh, or nephrotic syndrome or cirrhotic patients, patients with liver cirrhosis. And uh, we have to differentiate clinically between the primary and secondary hyperaldosteronism uh, that we, I will concentrate in my talk. As far as uh, 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 unilateral adrenal adenoma, uh, what is called the Cohen syndrome, mm, uh, actually it was diagnosed since my birthday, 19, uh, uh, 55 and uh, it was unilateral rather than bilateral as you see the picture in front of you the histopathological picture and the tumor uh, microscopically there you see uh, rich with livid and it is non-invasive uh, non-malignant uh, benign adenoma secreting excess aldosterone and constitutes 1% of hypertensor states. And uh, you, sh you see, in, uh, well, uh, if you collect all patients or population with hypertension, you see 1% of these hypertensor population are related to this uh, unilateral adrenal adenoma or primary aldosteronism. And some studies or statics, statis, statistic shows uh, it is 10% uh, rather, 5 to 10% rather than 1%. And this is very important to uh, keep in mind. And that's why the patient is presenting you or can be diagnosed by uh, as adenal adenoma. So uh, one of the workup of hypertensive patient is to investigate for the subarenal gland because one of the causes of hypertension is a primary aldosteronism or Cohn syndrome. Those patients usually uh, there is uh, age predilection uh, between 30 to 80 years, uh, while sex predominance usually female 2 to 1 as compared to male 2 to 1 more common in female rather than in male. The patients usually, uh, clinically, either uh, symptomatic, they are present with hypertension and, uh, or, or routinely found uh, during searching, the being labeled as hypertensive, 
or they may present with symptoms of hypertension, nausea, vomiting, if it's very high blood pressure, short of blood pressure, headache is uh, uh, common, and weakness and fatigue and polyuria and polydipsia. We know back to physiology, aldosterone uh, causes a retention of sodium and potassium excretion. So there will be hypernatremia and hypokalemia. Uh, hypokalemia will lead to hypokalemic metabolic alkalosis. And hypokalemia, irrespective of the cause, will cause uh, depletion of magnesium. So there is hypoma associated hypomagnesemia, hypokalemia, hypomagnesemia, metabolic alkalosis, and there will be uh, irresponsiveness of renal tubules, so the effect of antidiuretic hormone, so there will be nephrogenic diabetes, mellitus, and that's why they will present with polyuria and polydipsia. This is the mechanism behind uh, these symptomatology, uh, symptom symptomatologic uh, features. Okay, uh, in patients with hypokalemia, since they have hypokalemic metabolic alkalosis, the compensatory mechanism, the urine will be, as we anticipated, uh, and nephrogenic diabetes uh, mellitus, there will be diluted urine, the ability con to concentrate urine um, is failed, and secondly, the urine will be alkalotic, neutral or alkaline pH. Why? Because there is hypersecretion of ammonium and bicarbonate in urine as a compensatory mechanism for hypokalemic metabolic alkalosis. And this, this um, issue is very important to keep in mind uh, and it will help you for diagnosis of these cases. Uh, at any rate, uh, characteristically, patients with Cohn syndrome or primary hyperaldosteronism, they suffer from, they uh, get ischemic phenomena. They are characteristically uh, not show, uh, don't show edema or legs edema or edema on other sides. And this is called ischemic phenomena. And this is one of important clinical aspects to differentiate between a primary Cohn syndrome and secondary Cohn syndrome of heart failure. Secondary hyperaldosteronism associated with edema, while prim primary uh, hyperaldosteronism, there is no edema. And then, uh, as far as cardiovascular involvement is very important, there is hypertension, hypertensive effect will lead to left ventric ventricular hyperten uh, hypertrophy, and this uh, may lead to heart failure. But uh, reminding you, uh, left ventricular hypertrophy, once you remove the tumor, it will be reversible, not irreversible, it will re be reversible. Second important mechanism for left ventricular hypertrophy and cardiovascular sequelae is independent of uh, hypertension. It is related to aldosterone excess. And there is a specific mechanism similar to diabetes and other. There is a primary cardiac involvement related to aldosterone excess uh, and uh, by which there will be LVH. So there are two ways for LVH, the uh, hyperaldosterone secretion and the LVH related to hypertension. And uh, both of them are reversible in treatment. Uh, uh, hypertension, uh, left ventricle will regress after uh, removal of uh, the tumor if it is related to adrenal adenoma. There will be ECG changes, there will be clinical manifestations, cardiovascular manifestations, uh, LVH, and uh, welcome. Uh, beside to that, there will be a manifestations of cardiac arrhythmia in form of ventricular ectopics. Any form of cardiac arrhythmia may occur, uh, sinus bradycardia, sinus tachycardia, and characteristically, because of hypokalemia, you may see a uh, U wave in ECG, beside to LVH, beside to arrhythmia, uh, ECG may show U wave in uh, and uh, Cohn syndrome uh, or because of 
hypo kalemic persistent hypo kalemic alkalosis and this is uh, very important in, in patients for diagnosis we have to uh, keep the uh, high index of suspicion for the cause and any hypertensive patients think of Crohn syndrome since it may be a, a cause of it as you know hypertension essential hypertension and secondary hypertension and essential 95 percent of cases while uh, secondary hypertension in which there is cause five to ten percent of cases so the so this sector of secondary hypertension you have to keep uh, ad, uh, adrenal adenoma as a cause and you have to work up of this case the, uh, after you get uh, and you keep high in this of suspicion you have to keep the triad of diagnosis or suspicion and then you have to confirm the diagnosis the triad consists of hypertension without edema this is very important point Se uh, second uh, important thing there will be hypokalemic metabolic alkalosis with hypernatremia plus a low plasma renin activity low plasma renin activity this is very important and no edema keep in mind there is uh, vascular expansion uh, uh, hypernatremia hypokalemia and uh, low uh, hyperaldosterone uh, elevated aldosterone and low plasma renin activity and the third the triad is uh, uh, is uh, aldosterone uh, plasma renin aldosterone plasma renin activity ratio uh, you check aldosterone and you check renin in a plasma and you uh, calculate the ratio of aldosterone to renin if it is uh, more than 30 uh, nanogram per deciliter, it is diagnostic and helpful for diagnosis because in this syndrome there is hyperaldosterone secretion plus a low, a low or low plasma renin activity. While this is again important clinical different, uh, biochemical uh, differentiation between a primary and secondary hyperaldosteronism. In a primary hyperaldosteronism, there will be hormonal aldosterone high, renin uh, low. So there is high plasma renin uh, ratio. While in secondary, the uh, plasma renin very high, while aldosterone high, uh, the ratio is not that uh, high as in the primary. So keep this is an awal and no edema. Second, the aldosterone renin activity or ratio is high, more than third, uh, goes or in favor of diagnosis. Of. So keep this tried in your mind. In some of the cases, you might find uh, uremia or azotemia due to persistent hypertension of uh, adrenal adenoma. They get azotemia. The plasma renin will be high or elevated because uh, they are uremic. You need the, so it is uh, not hundred uh, percent. So a presence of uh, normal or high renin does not exclude a diagnosis of Crohn syndrome. Keep this point in uh, in your mind because it may come. You may come across uh, uh, about this in your clinical studies uh, cases as far as the clinical examination is concerned. And do you know, and in the, back to our endocrinological issues for diagnosis, since we have hypersecretary state, we have to do confirmation and suppression tests. If it is hypofunction, we do a stimulation tests like Addison disease. We give ACTH, we show the capacity or reserve. No? And I should say, we, what to do is suppression test. How can we suppress uh, Crohn syndrome? it is not suppressible how we do vascular expansion by loading with or loading with salt loading with salt so there will be no suppression of aldosterone usually normally uh, there is suppression of aldosterone if you have high uh, vascular volume high uh, sodium content there will be suppression of aldosterone secretion here non-suppressible that is because there is an autonomous secretion 
of from of aldosterone of from the supranormal gland due to the existence of adrenal adenoma. And this is a, uh, are you following me or not? Okay, it's very clear and uh, easily understood, uh, understandable. So uh, this is a very important issue. Another thing, if you keep patients uh, with, uh, you, if you have a patient, a young patient to present to 30 uh, young uh, female, presented to you with hypertension, with hypokalemic metabolic alkalosis, diluted urine, polyuria, polydipsia, and you are thinking this is a case of uh, adren adrenal adenoma or con syndrome. What to do uh, to uh, stop uh, potassium sparing diuretic? You give her potassium uh, amount for one to two weeks, then check blood pressure, check aldosterone, check potassium. Persistently, your patient will be hypertensive. After second week, uh, they will have persistently, they will have hypokalemic metabolic alkalosis, and they have hyperaldosterone. And this is very important. And uh, we comp you compensate for uh, potassium, but in spite of that, there will be hypokalemia. So there is some sort of endogenous pathology and uh, that lead to secretion of aldosterone, which will, uh, which will be a cause of caluria or potassium excretion persistent. This is very important point again, uh, or issue to keep it in your mind for uh, diagnosis. So diagnosis is biochemical and uh, radiological. Uh, biochemical is elaborating high aldosterone, uh, renin ratio and uh, suppression test and then we document diagnosis to localize the tumor by CT scan or MRI of the abdomen for a subarenal gland. Well, uh, it will be positive but why if the patient is related to adrenal hyperplasia and nodular hyperplasia uh, the uh, CT scan will be negative or MRI will be negative. Reminding with the size of the tumor sometimes uh, reaching up to 10 centimeters, sometimes less than cent less. If it is malignant, less than the size, less than five centimeters in diameter. So, how can we treat these patients uh, if we diagnose them? Uh, logically, if there is a tumor, adenoma, uh, unilateral, as we mentioned, uh, commonly by a uh, unilateral uh, or a sectoral U, uh, the main hope of treatment is surgery, surgical removal. And the, the field of uh, this surgery is preferable to be laparoscopic removal of the tumor. And uh, there are experienced surgeons in this type of surgery or operations. So laparoscopic uh, removal of adrenal adenoma is uh, what will happen after adrenal blood pressure will return back in majority of the cases. But in some cases, the blood pressure is not reversible, is not curable. In which cases, or in whom, the, uh, the uh, hypertension will persist if they have uh, the azotemia or uremia. The blood pressure will not return back to normal because there will be uh, vascular changes, anatomical and, physiolog uh, anatomical and physiological changes in the blood vessels, and that's why blood pressure. Are not. So, completely reversible hypertension after surgery? No. The answer, false. Commonly, re hypertension reversed or cured after surgery? The answer is true. Some patients with adrenal adenoma, their hypertension will be persisted after uh, laparoscopic surgery of uh, removal of the supranormal adenoma? Yes. Yes. When there is uh, associated azotemia or uremia, as I have mentioned. What will be the prognosis of the surgery? The prognosis, 5% uh, survival. Yani is good, and uh, if you start your surgery, uh, there is better uh, before in uh, than advanced uh, type of surgery.
nice me to mention those patients with secondary hypertension is a treatment that directed is to directed to the treatment of the cause. And you are familiar with cases of congestive heart failure, nephrotic syndrome, liver cirrhosis, and commonly you will strike the fluid and you give aldectone uh, to, uh, to combat or to antagonize uh, hyper hyperaldosteronism. Here, in a primary or Crohn syndrome, primary uh, mineralocorticoid excess or primary aldosteronism, <coughs> again, if your patient is not uh, uh, operative uh, or assist or refuse surgery, you go to conservative therapy. And here is not uh, fluid restriction, it is salt restriction uh, and uh, give the patient uh, aldosterone and agonist, aldactone or spironolactone. The on long term use, since the drug will be on long term use, what will happen? The side effect will may appear in patient and the common side effect of aldactone, uh, gynecomastia, if your patient has a, is a male, and uh, sexual uh, dysfunction, actually impotence, uh, decreased libido, these are side effects of aldactone, besides to uh, hyperkalemia may occur in uh, some of the cases. Next. So three, next. So as I have mentioned, treatment, treatment directed to adrenal adenoma, uh, the CA surgical removal, the hormone, the CA, uh, you, you remove the tumor, whether uh, malignant or benign. If, uh, if there is a bilateral adrenal adenoma, either the cause is uh, excess ACTH, I mean in the pituitary gland or extra pituitary ACTH, well, you know, uh, there will be hypertension and high acid, there is no nothing to do there. You have to uh, do bilateral adrenalectomy, uh, superadrenal adrenalectomy, whether medical or surgical, as, a, as we have mentioned in Cushing syndrome. Uh, bilateral, if it is not operable, surgical, uh, if it is not the x-ray therapy. Uh, bilateral medical, we have mentioned these in uh, treatment and management of it's also here the same situations uh, you see all in a bit steroidogenesis next diagnosis next you are correct you are wrong you are passing uh, incorrectly you go forward yes, yes the, you go forward uh, no 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 ne uh, return back return back yes Confirm the diagnosis of primary of the, you do CT scan, this is a uh, CT scan for the adrenal gland. If it is normal, micronodularity, hyperplasia, or bilateral masses, what will you do? This way, you go this way. If it is unilateral, hypodense node, you are more than one CM, you go this way until you reach the diagnosis. No, you see the tumor uh, here grow uh, in front of you, the microscopic appearance of the tumor. Next. Another uh, superadrenal gland uh, hormonal excess, uh, but th in this moment, the, it is not related to the cortical aspect, but to, I uh, don't you know, to the medullary portion of the superadrenal gland. I knew, as you know, Superadrenal gland, we have right and left bilateral, the two glands. Uh, each gland composed of the cortical portion and the uh, medullary portion. The medullary portion of the uh, adrenal glands uh, secreting a, a, a catecholamine, epinephrine, nor norepinephrine, and sometimes dopamine. So accordingly, it may affect the blood pressure and uh, there are cases of excess in which there is uh, store, uh, excess secretion, excess synthesis of uh, these catecholamine and, uh, and this we face them in patients with pheochromocytoma. What is pheochromocytoma? By definition it is adrenal tumor, the medullary adrenal tumor, uh, better to say, more specific, medullary adrenal tumor that produce and store 
and secrete and release catecholamine to the circulation. But it may be uh, outside the suprarenal gland, extra adrenal in origin. It is mentioned that this tumor is a tumor of 10 because 10% 10 uh, 10 may be bilateral and 10% uh, malignant. Yeah, so 90%, 80 to 90% is benign and 10% uh, bilateral, 10% extra adrenal uh, and 10% femenal. You see? So well, that's why it's called 10%. You see 10% bilateral, 10% extra adrenal, 10% malignant, 10% familial as part of multiple endocrine neoplasia 2, type 2, and type 3. Type 2, there is parathyroid uh, adenoma, uh, pheochromocytoma, medullary cell, uh, medullary thyroid cancer, as you remember. Uh, so so type, type 2 or type 1? Type 2. Not type one. Type one, uh, three. Mm -hmm. like pituitary adenoma, uh, parathyroid adenoma, and pancreatic adenoma. Type two, how are the lead actually? Yes. I have mentioned pheochromocytoma, medullary thyroid carcinoma, and type three, uh, the same, but you add the neural fibromatosis, bone recurrent causing disease, or mucocutaneous. Uh, neurocutaneous syndrome, neurocutaneous syndrome. Now, so this is a tumor. Uh, the history, you see the uh, gross anatomy of the tumor, as uh, you see in the front of you, uh, and there is a cross section, hemorrhagic necrosis, and fat deposition, excess fat, beside to the tumor related to other argentafine cells or chromaffine cells and usually benign. The, uh, the criteria of malignancy, as uh, it is mentioned, 10% of patients may be malignant. One, how can you know uh, this malignant biochromocyte or malignant type? Uh, by local invasion and second, by extra adrenal metastasis. To the bone, preferably uh, it will go to the bone or lung. Uh, the secondary. So these two things uh, are related to the uh, thinking or uh, the issue of being malignant rather than benign. Is it clear? Ah, okay. So, how does the patient present to you and uh, clinically the diagnosis uh, and the diagnosis? Clinically, uh, the patient usually uh, present with hypertension or they are asymptomatic and you uh, catch them through elaborating hypertension or uh, checking of a blood diversion in the father. Hyperten hypertension itself, 60% may be uh, sustained type of hypertension, 40% may be in a crisis or in paroxysms or uh, occurrence. You see? <coughs> and there are cases of accelerated hypertension and there are cases of malignant hypertension. You know the accelerated hypertension is different from malignant hypertension. What is mentioned, what is related to malignant hypertension, you have two diagnoses on uh, elevated blood diversion, retinal involvement, retinal hemorrhage or papilledema, eye changes and end organ defect, renal failure, CVA or cardiovascular. Uh, with these criteria, uh, it is a malignant hypertension. With, uh, but just finding of just elevated blood pressure, even if it is 90 or 22 over 110 over 130, it is uh, accelerated hypertension or exacerbated hypertension, but not malignant. Uh, the malignant hypertension, as I have mentioned, there are criteria to its diagnosis, so you have to differentiate. There are cases of unexplained hypotension. You are, you will be surprised. Yeah, unexplained hypotension and shock during surgery and cetera. Do you know why? And we have mentioned back to the physiology of the adrenal medullary portion. They may secrete epinephrine, norepinephrine, and dopamine. 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 So in patients with the tumor of the adrenal medulla, uh, secreting dopamine 
they will suffer from hypotension, hypotension rather than hypertension. So the uh, uh, the uh, two broad spectrum, you have to think of hypertension and you have to think of hypotension. They may present this way and you know the mechanism behind that and they may present with hypotension and you have to know the cause or the etiology or the mechanism according to the uh, type of hormone secreted from the adrenal medal, you see? And in paroxysms uh, or in a crisis, it occurs in 50% of patients with uh, pheochromocytoma. They have definitely uh, excess catecholamine will cause hypertension, headache, uh, sweating, tachycardia, uh, frightening, agitation, uh, apprehension, chest pain and abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting, pallor, and uh, sometimes a flushing. You see, pallor, a flushing, uh, and hypertension, sometimes hypotension. Next. These crises uh, usually are precipitated by an, uh, a stimulus, by a factor. They don't occur alone. Commonly uh, precipitated by citrus, irrespective of the citrus, uh, uh, drugs, opiates, histamine, sarlacine, which is antihypertensive, ACTH, aldomate, which is anti again antihypertensive, tricyclic antidepressants, which is bad actually, uh, antidepressant drug uh, used for uh, depressed patient, patients, and high basal metabolic rate and weight loss. These will augment and will precipitate uh, features or a crisis of uh, patients with pheochromocytoma. Cardiac manifestations, as you anticipate, there is sinus tachycardia, sinus bradycardia, all groups of, of arrhythmias are there, ventricular premature beats, uh, supraventricular tachycardia, SVT, left ventricular citrine and LVH because of hypertension, sustained hypertension will cause uh, left ventricular hypertrophy, heart failure, and the broad spectrum entity of ischemic heart disease. On one uh, end, uh, there is angina, and in the other spectrum, there is myocardial infarction and in between intermediate syndrome or acute coronary insufficiency. So patient may suffer from angina or acute coronary insufficiency or may suffer or may present with myocardial infarction. Uh, the, the patients, beside to the effect of hypertension on left ventricle, there will be LVH, uh, due to hypertension, and there is cardiomyopathy as you care in patients <coughs> with diabetes uh, and concern. Mm -hmm. There is cardiomyopathy, uh, another mechanism for, which is another mechanism for the genesis of congestive heart failure in patients with pheochromocytoma. So ischemic heart disease, persistent hypertension, cardiomyopathy, all uh, may cause heart failure and cardiac arrhythmia in this group of people. There will be carbohydrate metabolism, impairment of carbohydrate metabolism, and in 50% of patients there will be a glucose tolerance test positive, impaired in glucose, and in some patients with a question mark, some patients may, be, may become diabetic, 5 to 10% of may become due to impaired carbohydrate metabolism. And you know, catecholamine is insulin antagonist. Catecholamines are insulin antagonist. Again, remember, remind uh, the fight of Iraq with 30 uh, countries. One uh, hormone, insulin, and there are so many hormones antagonizing its effect. Among these hormones that cause insulin antagonism is catecholine, catecholamine hormone and epinephrine nor, nor epinephrine. Next, you see, how can we evaluate these patients? Uh, first of all, you have to keep them in your mind. In any patient with hypertension, with a criteria mentioned, with a clinical feature mentioned, you have to think of your chromocytoma. 
and and secondary type of hypertension on in a group of with five to ten percent of cases of hypertension, you have to think of pheochromocytoma. Uh, reminding you, as I have mentioned, it may be located in the adrenal gland. It may be outside the adrenal. Where is the gland? Where is the site of extra adrenal? You have to ask yourself. It could be in commonly 80% maybe in the abdomen, 10% in the neck thorax, and less than 5% in the urinary bladder. So in those patients, in the, when the tumor located in the urinary bladder, and the sympathetic nerve, my urinary bladder, once they void urine, they go to the paroxysm, the crisis. So it is important to, to, to think of it since you are postgraduate and it may come you and case study. So once they would, they, they can, sometimes they are labeled as hysteria. Uh, if you are not a good physician, if you are not thinking of them, you will label them as hysteria or neurotic patients. Actually, they are real patients and uh, they suffer from this uh, phenomenon. Next, in the abdomen, sometimes in the well, located in the celiac, and the mesenteric inferior superior mesenteric uh, ganglions. Uh, the tumor may be located there or in the sympathetic uh, tract of the chest or the neck in uh, 10% of patients. So very difficult to localize sometimes the tumor because you do CT scan MRI for the adrenal gland, you cannot diagnose that. So the work above the cases after clinical assessment, you have to uh, do pharmacological testing uh, and anatomical diagnosis. What is the pharmacological testing? By giving alpha blocker, then beta blocker. You do alpha blockade and beta blockade. Leash, because if you do beta blocker alone, uh, there's, you don't know the secretary capacity, <coughs> what type of hormone. Are you dealing with uh, epinephrine excess, norepinephrine excess, or dopamine excess? So that's why you have to do alpha blockade and then beta blockade, and you, then you go to biochemical testing, uh, how you uh, do a 24-hour urine for catecholamine, which is a specific for diagnosis, a uh, specific issue for diagnosis of pheochromocytoma. And then keep in your mind the 24-hour urine collection for catecholamine. Not VMA, vanil, mandelium, cousin, because there are false positive and false negative. And it, uh, the, the test will be interfered by drugs, by diet, by food, you see, uh, by stress, by psychology, anxiety, and keep this in your mind. Then you come to anatomical diagnosis. Uh, how can you diagnose by CT scan or MRI and localize the tumor if it is uh, in the uh, adrenal medulla, if it is extra adrenal, it is very difficult to diagnose, actually, mm -hmm. to cancel the diagnosis. As I have mentioned, clonidine suppression test, again, is very important uh, for uh, issue for the diagnosis and for evaluation of patients who, uh, with uh, pheochromocytoma. How can we manage? The tumor is benign and 80 to 90 percent of okay. so usually unilateral, and 10% bilateral. So remove, remove, localize, and remove the tumor after a prepared your patient for surgery. You have to do for him beta blocking, and then you proceed for surgery. You have to prepare patient uh, well. Otherwise, he will get a crisis on the table of uh, in the theater, and he may die. So. Uh, you may lose your patient. Preoperative treatment is by alpha blocker, leofenoxy, benzamine, acufentolamine, as you know. These are alpha blocker, uh, blockers, 10 milligram, uh, 12 hourly, for two, two weeks, and then decreasing the blood pressure with uh, sodium nitroprusside. You may need it actually if it is not. Uh, the first uh, alpha blocker is not sufficient. After do you do alpha blocker, you do beta blocker. You keep your patient uh, on indirect for two weeks, 10 milligram three times, and you do uh, your set. Uh, if the tumor is diagnosed with pregnancy, uh, during the pregnancy, and during the first trimester, 
adrenal medulla fibrocromocytoma usually in the first trimester is surgery after you prepare patient for surgery. Surgery is the only hope for treatment. If it is uh, during uh, the uh, third trimester, you may continue uh, treatment with beta blockade uh, until the uh, caesarean section uh, uh, procedure is feasible or you remove the tumor. Uh, uh, meantime, medical treatment with uh, beta blocker, you know, teratogenic. Uh, all cases and all studies that they did surgery, uh, there are no side uh, effects and uh, no harms for the fetus uh, because of beta blocker usage. And uh, this is uh, not reported actually in the cases which are being studied. So it is advisable in this case. Uh, so the only hope for uh, pheochromocytoma during pregnancy is surgery, surgical removal. There is a high risk for fetal. If you remove, if you, if you keep patients uh, without surgery, they may, a patient may abort. There will be fetal risk and maternal risk, specifically uh, during the first time and second trimester. Okay? No termination. No terminate. You may terminate pregnancy uh, when the patient is desired or is will, according to the will of the patient. But this is the science. You have to uh, not terminate the pregnancy unless you, there is uh, features. Uh, any there is, uh, like other indications of termination of pregnancy. Is it clear? Or I repeat? Okay. So, what will be the prognosis? 5% survival, 5% uh, to, uh, mortality is 2 to 3% actually. Well, survival at 5 to 10 percent, uh, five year survival occur in 80 percent of patients. Very good. 80 to 90 percent, so good recovery. In malignant patient, uh, five year survival is 50 percent. But there are cases with malignant pheochromocytoma, they live long. Life expectancy were, were good and, uh, was good and bad in those in spite of they have. Uh, malignant pheochromocytoma. Spontaneous remission may occur. This is very important. I mean, the disease may bear itself. So keep this when it comes to an examination. Five year survival, 90%. Recurrence rate is less than 10%, uh, and mortality rate less than 2 to 3%. And uh, labor again, laparoscopic <coughs> surgical removal uh, is a good practice. There are experienced uh, surgeons in this field of, uh, and in this type of surgery. Next. No? Yes. Well, then we come to uh, the other aspect of uh, suprarenal gland uh, is the uh, hypocortisolism or hyposecretary states. One of the list of high adrenal hyposecretion is the Addison disease. Uh, or uh, adrenal hypofunctional state or adrenal insufficiency. And by adrenal insufficiency, may, maybe again the, uh, the problem is in the adrenal or either in the adrenal gland, suprarenal cortex, or it is outside in the pituitary or extra pituitary, as you will see. So there is a primary adrenal hypofunction and there is secondary adrenal hypofunction and you have to keep this in order to differentiate between primary and secondary hypocortisolism and uh, Edison disease as it is first described by Edison uh, and uh, defined uh, adrenal hypofunction there is adrenal uh, damage hypertrophy or preserved, uh, preserved anatomy of the suprarenal cortex, but in spite of that, there is hypofunction, hyposecretion of the suprarenal cortical hormones, including aldosterone, cortisol, and sex hormone, androgen, specifically in females. Uh, actually, uh, the age predilection is no age. 
preference. Uh, uh, they may occur at any age. This is one. And second, both sexes. Similar frequency, similar incidence in both sexes. This is different from other endocrine hormones. The male-female ratio, one to one, and age predilection, any age group of patients. Now, what it could be the etiology of the disease or a distant disease? Remember, reminding you the uh, famous uh, American president, George, George Foster Kennedy, Foster Kennedy, George Kennedy, George Kennedy, uh, the, he was a case of a distant disease. And this picture is in front of you. Uh, he, this is a well-known story. He got uh, a distant disease, as you see uh, from the face and the fine. Yeah, now back to the uh, to etiology of a distant disease. It could be anato related to an anatomical destruction. I'm talking on primary. Uh, type in which the disease is in the uh, adrenal uh, suprarenal cortex. There will be a anatomic destruction of the adrenal gland, which could be acute or chronic. It may be idiopathic or autoimmune atrophy, but either isolated ent entity in which there is anti-adrenal antibody or part of multi-system autoimmune disease type one. Schmidt syndrome and type 2 Schmidt syndrome. Type 1 occurs in infants and children, and type 2 Schmidt syndrome occurs in young and adult age group. In type 1, there is mucocutaneous candidiasis, uh, parathyroid insufficiency, and there is Addison disease. As you know, you know this. In type 2, uh, Schmidt syndrome or polyendocrinal hypofunction, uh, autoimmune in nature. There is Addison disease, thyroid, hypothyroidism, hyperthyroidism, uh, uh, Hashimoto's thyroiditis, uh, hypoparathyroidism, ovarian for uh, premature ovarian ovarian failure, uh, may be associated with chronic active hepatitis alopecia, and other auto vitiligo and other autoimmune diseases, as you anticipate. And the those group of people, uh, shukran. Uh, so uh, this is uh, important uh, to cover and, uh, as far as the uh, autoimmune. Uh, previously, it is mentioned idiopathic. What is meant by idiopathic is autoimmune disease, uh, in which there is atrophied uh, atrophy of the supranormal cortex because of autoantibodies. Then surgical removal, as you anticipate, if the supranormal gland, uh, if we done a uh, bilateral adrenalectomy, what will happen? Hypofunction, hypoadrenal function, and we have to replace the patient with hormones, required hormones. Then infective aspect, infective agent, infection, uh, causing destruction of the or uh, anatomical destruction of the gland. Uh, TB previously is, uh, is frequently blamed for uh, as etiology for uh, hypo, adrenal hypofunction. Fungal, cryptococcosis, blastomycosis, uh, coccidosis. So all these uh, fungi may be blamed for uh, destruction of the viral infection, commonly cytomegalovirus. AIDS patient, HIV virus is very important, and an HIV, an HIV virus, AIDS patient, the disease may be uh, adrenal hypofunction, may be related to the virus itself, and may be related to uh, Kaposi's sarcoma, or related to uh, TB, atypical type of mycobacterium, mycobacterium cansasi, or mycobacterium uh, avium intracellulare. These are atypical uh, TB uh, pathogens uh, commonly uh, seen in patients with AIDS or HIV virus infection. Then another cause of uh, hypofunction is hemorrhage, irrespective of, of cause, whether related to thrombocytomyini, related to leukemia, lymphoma, or drug or ITB, or anticoagulant therapy, heparin or warfarin, uh, as you may believe in tendency like hemophilia and others. Uh, 
group of uh, hemorrhage, uh, causes of hemorrhage, or invasive, invasive destruction of the subranal gland by malignancy, uh, metastatic malignancy, or primary malignancy in the gland itself. And then we have metabolic for her uh, failure in the hormone production or hormone genesis uh, as occur in congenital adrenal hyperplasia in which there are specific enzyme deficiency, or, uh, important enzyme for genesis of steroid uh, biosynthesis. If there's any enzyme deficiency, there will be hypoadrenal function. Uh, or the enzyme inhibitors like uh, drugs like metarabone or uh, uh, mitotan uh, or uh, OPDD insecticides uh, like OPDD, Lisamu, mitotan, or antifungal like ketokens. All these inhibit uh, steroidogenesis, uh, and that's why cause metabolic fall, failure and the uh, gland so will cause high adrenal hypofunction. Then we have a drugs, antibiotic like rifadine, uh, uh, anti-epileptic like uh, phenytoin, opiates, and ACTH antibodies. Sometimes there will be antibody to ACTH, preventing ACTH to be connected to its receptors. Its receptors and they, you know, ACTH comes from the uh, basophilic cell of the pituitary gland, it will do effect on the subranal by attaching to its a specific receptor. There are antibodies in some of the cases, antibodies uh, uh, preventing uh, connection or binding of ACTH to its specific receptor, so there will be no stimulation of the gland, so there will be metabolic failure of the subranal cortex and there will be adrenal hypofunction. Next. Secondary cases of adrenal hypofunction, uh, hypofunction and we have mentioned hypoaldosterone, hypopetutarism. And we mentioned Sheehan syndrome and a lot of causes, a lot of causes for hypopetutarism. All patients with hypopituitarism will suffer from adrenal hypofunction. And then pituitary uh, gland uh, suppression, either by exogenous steroid, endogenous steroid. The, we, we, are common, we have common problem in uh, like steroid abuse, whether using dexamethasone or ACTH. Both will cause uh, pituitary suppression and adrenal hypofunction. No, uh, mycocutaneous hyperpigmentation. Mycocutaneous uh, hyper will be absent in patients with second. While in Addison disease, there will be hyperpigmentation. In Addison disease, there will be elevated ACTH. And secondary, adrenal hypofunction will be low ACTH. So keep this, uh, this important point to differentiate between the cases. You see, very important. ACTH and aldosterone are normal or low. I went and second, and secondary adrenal hypofunction. ACTH will be normal or uh, aldosterone again, I, and aldosterone is not stimulated by ACTH as I have mentioned in the previous lecture and the physiological concern or issue of subarenal gland. Uh, and then uh, in secondary, it will be reversible after a treatment. While in Addison disease, you need permanent treatment. It is irreversible because there is anatomical destruction here. Once you remove the cause, it will be reversible. This, these are the important differential point between primary and secondary adrenal hypofunction. Now, how can we diagnose Addison disease? Diagnosis depends on uh, clinical history, uh, important history, uh, clinical feature, examination of the patients, and lab evaluation and confirming, uh, confirming the diagnosis through laboratory assessment. You see history, clinical examination, and lab. Uh, what to do? ICTH? And, and Addison disease will be either normal or high. 
But ACTH alone is not diagnostic of a distant disease because it has a pulsatile pattern of secretion. You might catch it normal, you might catch it low. It depends on which moment you are uh, testing or you are getting the sample of a blood. So keep this in your mind. ACTH, high ACTH is not diagnostic for Addison disease. This is one. Second, cortisol, zero to low, usually low. And again, it is not diagnostic, but it may be helpful or give a glue for the diagnosis of Addison disease. And then we come to the important issue in endocrine. It is adrenal hypofunction. So what to do? Stimulation. We have to do a stimulation test. ACTH to stimulate the subarachnoid gland. So ACTH stimulation test is not a single dose of ACTH given for a patient will diagnose a disease. It because it is a pulsatile and its secretion. That's why we have to do is most accepted way of diagnosis specific uh, is ACTH infusion test. You give ACTH for 24 hours, and then you serial, serially checking uh, cortisol hormone uh, and, uh, and, 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 and serum. This is the diagnosis. So diagnostic of low chance, signs and symptoms, uh, rest of the weakness, hypotension, weight loss, hyperpigmentation, sacrine, etc. Now, what are the clinical features? Uh, the clinical features, usually the patient may be asymptomatic for many years, then you, uh, they suffer from symptoms. And the symptoms include weakness, lethargy, uh, fatigability, uh, and uh, we can categorize them according to system or organ, as you see. And the GI tract, the symptom will be, uh, will be nausea, or vomiting, uh, hypot uh, nausea, vomiting, diary, and constipation, the pseudo-intestinal obstruction, and uh, weight loss, weight loss, poor appetite and weight loss. Cardiovascular system include weak, feeble heart, small size heart, heart failure, heart failure uh, due to persistent hypotension, heart failure, arrhythmia, and type of arrhythmia, and then uh, central nervous system, what will happen to a patient with Addison disease, confusion, uh, confusion, drowsy, fatigue, uh, lassitude, malaise, and the patient may go into coma, actually, uh, convulsion and coma. Why? Because of hypoglycemia and hypo hypotension. You know, patient with Addison disease persistently are hypotensive. And again, the cone syndrome persistently are hypertensive, but hypokalemic. And now, persistently hypotension, the blood pressure may not be more than 80 over 50. Systole 80 with diastole 50 may not be elevated more than this, but associated with hyperkalemia. The other way around, if you compare it to cone syndrome, hyperkalemia. So dermatological features, we have hyperpigmentation in the skin, mucocutaneous hyperpigmentation, the exposed area to the sun. There, be, uh, uh, there will be a phenomenon of tanning. Skin is uh, at risk of tanning. Yani, what is meant by tanning? In Arabic, uh, once you expose uh, the, the bars of the skin, it will be uh, deeply pigmented. Uh, brownish black pigmentation, brownish black pigmentation, and it may occur in uh, the oral cavity. So, mucocutaneous hyperpigmentation. Keep in this your mind. It is not uh, the pigmentation is not related to skin only, but to the mucosa. So, mucocutaneous hyperpigmentation, and that's why you have to look the oral cavity uh, for this pigmentation. And uh, then hematologic uh, features of uh, what will be the effect of hematology or what will you anticipate. We mentioned in Cushing syndrome, the effect of a steroid here, 
ذا سيرو ديفيشنت ايش راح يصير؟ ايسينوفيليا راح يصير ايسينوفيليا كاركترستيك اللي هي بيزوفيليا ايسينوفيليا اند يو سي ليمفوسايتوسيس ريليفت تي اند بي ليمفوسايتوسيس وايل ان ستيرويدوز او كوشنج سندروم ذا اذر وي راوند يو سي ليمفوبين هي ريليتف ليمفوسايتوس هي اند بي ليمفوسايتوس اند ذير از يو سي سو يو هاف تو تشيك يو سي نفل تشيك بوتاسيوم تشيك بلاد برشر هاي بوتنشن هاي بركليمه يو سي نفل ثينك اوف اديسن ديزيز بسايد تو اذر فيتشرز نو انيميا انيميا اوف كرونيك النس ريليتد concomitant anemia of chronic disease or debilitating disease. Electrolyte disturbance, I have mentioned hyperkalemia, hyponatremia, hyperchloremia, hypermagnesemia, uh, hyperkalemia, hypermagnesemia, hypermagnesemia, usually uh, potassium and magnesium, they go hand by hand because they are intracellular. Uh, okay, let's. Now, and this is the way of diagnosis or, and differentiation between the primary and secondary adrenal hypofunction. You know, uh, well, clear mention, and I have discussed, discussed uh, them, uh, the way of differentiation in my talk. You see the uh, picture in front of you. You see emaciated face, drowsy, confused, depressed, mask face, pallor, anemia, pallor and hyperpigmentation of the skin and your uh, oral cavity if you uh, open the cavity. This is the second picture is related to hyperpigmentation, brown black pigmentation in the skin uh, and you see the oral cavity pigmentation in the third slide in the front of you. Next. How can we treat? Logically, treatment is directed to the cause. If it is infection, you treat infection. Bacterial, uh, TB, fungal, viral, uh, etc. If it is bleeding, treat the cause of bleeding. If it is uh, autoantibody, you have to treat uh, autoantibody. And so, uh, primary mineral or corticoid insufficiency or primary. Uh, hypoadrenal function is treated by hormonal replacement therapy. There is no surgical uh, correction. There is no tumor to resect. Uh, treatment is medical and conservative and persistent treatment. Long, 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 lifelong treatment. You need to replace the hormone. What type of hormone that you are, uh, you have to replace your patient? Yes. Uh, cortisol uh, in a dose of two-thirds of the dose at morning and one-third of the dose evening. And then mineralocorticoid administration, fludrocortisone, again, to elevate blood pressure because there is aldosterone deficiency, as you know, uh, the all hormones. And sometimes you need to give androgen uh, especially if, you, if the patient is female, to uh, uh, motivate their life, uh, sexual activity, their potency, and their libido. So they are in need of androgen. Uh, and then supportive therapy accordingly. And then advice is an instruction for your patient before going to dental surgery. Keep a card instructing that he is an Addison disease in order uh, uh, that if he get a crisis or trauma or uh, car accident, they know how to deal with this case and uh, uh, tell him if you have infection, if you have cold, or if you have uh, hot weather, you have to increase your dose of steroids. Uh, and uh, this is it. Next. Next. Yes. Uh, sorry, uh, you can just uh, stop. Uh, I have, uh, I'm sorry, I will cut uh, now. I will discontinue my talk and I will continue later on because, uh, as you know, I have examination of 60 medical